This episode of Fragbox TV is brought to you by the world's most beautiful nano reef tanks. Start your reefing adventure at reefcasa.com. What is going on, my reefing fam? March here, Fragbox TV. Welcome back to the channel. What are we going to talk about today? Do I always start from this angle? Hold on, let me just back up. I feel like I pick up the camera, which is like right here somewhere, and then I pick it up. And then you guys think that I have like a secret script. This is one hand. Look, this is the other. There ain't no script. There ain't nothing. We just pick it up and we start talking about what feels right. What's new in the shop? What's going on? What corals have caught my eye? What's going on with display tanks? What the... We don't swear anymore. What the fart bomb is going on at the front of the store? And then it kind of turns into a kind of fun, educational, vloggy mishmash of everything to do with these things right here, which are what? Tell us, dog. Double Jeopardy. Do you have the answer? Come on. Man, if you could just say one word, we would be so rich. I wouldn't have to sell corals for a living. We would just go on Jimmy Kimmel and that's it. Just like one word, like stop or bug or dad, anything. No, okay. Anyways, uh, saltwater aquariums, that's it. That is what we specialize in, in selling and doing and everything to do with these. And not so much saltwater fish. Why? Actually, today's video is not really about the fish. I want to talk to you about some of the new corals that we got in from Australia. Wrong. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Indonesia. I'm going to start by pressing a fancy little button over here on this side of the store. And what it does is it turns off the flow for about 15 minutes. And that's about the attention span of most of our viewers. So we'll press this little button. Thank you, Adaptive Reef, for making very cool products like this one right here. We're not sponsored to say that. I bought this with my own hard-earned coral money. And that should hopefully turn off the flow. Boom, flow off, 15 minutes. Let's see what is going on with these Indonesian corals. A lot of hard coral, a lot of SPS. That was really the highlight and the point of this order. This is a supplier that I went to go visit in Indonesia last year. You can check out some of the videos. We went in the farm, we actually went in the ocean. We did some snorkeling, picking corals, fragging corals out there. I think that was one of the coolest videos for me, just personally, in terms of making. It was really cool and I felt so connected really for the first time where these beautiful corals come from, back in the ocean, back in the water. Um, really surprised with, I don't know why I was surprised, but because, okay, I know why I was surprised. Because I always say hard corals, lots of flow, lots of light. But it's different when you're out there swimming and seeing how much freaking current these things truly get. We are never going to be able to get even close to that in uh, an aquarium. I would need to line this entire side with whatever pump of my choice, strong ones, and then just put them as strong as possible, non-stop. Like, you could not stay still. The current was intense. So, just keep that in mind. These tenuous, men. check these out. Just remarkable. Beautiful color. We always say that tenuous is one of the easier SPS corals to to keep and this is really there's two corals that are super popular uh, when we talk about hard coral and there's really two reasons why I ordered from Indonesia one of them is this one right here tenuous tenuous if you see one in the video you want a piece of more than happy to frag out of our fragoon that's what we call the fragoon it's our shallow lagoon aquarium it's the first thing you see when you walk through the door soon when I'm done with my drywall because you guys didn't know that I'm a drywall taper painter disaster maker uh, our little coffee bar finally is going to come I was inspired by traveling all over Europe and Asia surprisingly Korea has a really big coffee scene I want you guys to enjoy a coffee when you come in please don't dose it into the tanks so other than that this is really the first thing you see these clamps have been here for a while but they're looking great we have a couple left these were actually from Australia look at uh, the color after about six weeks four to six weeks how like rich and deep this is kind of a funky piece because it decided to stay half bleached. Like it looks so cool, but you see towards the top right of your screen, look at that. Like that is how it came in. And this is how well, half of it looks. So it's like only half recovered. I've really never seen a piece do that. Usually if they're gonna recover, they're gonna, they're gonna go for it. But this one, it looks like it's, I don't know. It's unusual. It's only half recovered, but this is a piece that's been here for quite a while. We have some abratinoides. This is a personal... No, is it abratinoides? Man, I've been doing this too long. Anyone want to buy frag box? I only need a million. You know what? That's it. And you can take all this in one shot. Take the whole store, everything on the walls, the name. I'm going to keep the dog, I think. 
You know what? what? Would I keep the dog? Yeah, yeah. We bought the store. Sorry. Sorry, Diggs. I didn't mean that. I'd keep the dog. I keep the YouTube channel. And it, you know what? I think it'd be, if someone bought it, I think one day I'd sell it. I think it'd be in your best interest for me to keep it because I'd keep the name Fragbox. I'd keep traveling the world. I'd keep making videos, but it would funnel and be free advertising back towards the store. If that makes sense. You can't really buy March. You can buy Fragbox. You can buy the name. You can buy the shop. But I think I'd keep the channel. I think I'd work that into the deal. Wow, did I just prophesize something to happen in the future? Check out this, Millie. This looks like it's been here a while. This has been here three days. So typically, doesn't look so amazing right out of the bag. Um, I want to be able to sell every single piece. So the whole idea behind the Fragoon here was to have a display sort of setting instead of this. This is a very organized OCD March sort of frag rack system, but I just got very tired of cleaning frag racks and I wanted to do something different. It's working kind of well. I kind of have to be in the shop right now to price stuff. Like the staff won't know what something like this is worth. So it's kind of tricky because some people want a bigger piece. So usually I'd say, you know, 50, 40 or $50. If somebody wants something bigger, I, I kind of want to be here to price it out. So we're still trying to figure out how our pricing is going to work as we take our baby steps towards this kind of new concept. I haven't really seen anyone do it like this. What I'm trying to do is keep the frags of the acro close to the parent colony. So you see those there? So if you're looking for this piece, then we can keep track and it's there. And now I just need to figure out how to do like a little sort of numbering system. But these ones look really good. Check out this beautiful Stylophora, almost like three colors. Hey, is anyone out there know I am on the fence if Magnificent I think they're called Magnificent or Queen Starfish if they're reef safe. So I don't know if my utter chaos colony here is dying and this starfish is just drawn to sort of that necrosis dead tissue sort of smell or if the starfish is causing this die off. If anyone knows, I do not know everything. Although it may seem, I get stumped and I ask questions every single day. That's kind of why I'm still so in love with this hobby after... I'm 33, started when I was 15, do the math kids, 18 something years, is that right? Yeah, but I still learn something new almost every day when I walk in the shop and I think that's what keeps me engaged and keeps me um, always coming back for more and keep getting frustrated and no swearing. Okay, so, torch, let's see, hammer, that's not a torch, that's a hammer. Some beautiful hammers, frog spawn, actually these have been here a while and they're getting more and more blue. The longer they stay here, it's getting more of a tealy blue. Um, these are from Indonesia, ship almost flawlessly. So only three dead in colonies out of, I don't know, over three, four hundred. It was a big order. We've moved through a lot of it already because just been busy in the shop catching up since Korea and uh, not having so much time to make videos. Look at this Indonesian gold torch. Wow, just perfect. And I don't know what they did differently in terms of shipping. If you guys are watching over there, Alan, hello. Um, these shipped really, really well. So typically, I'm, I'm, they don't ship so hot. Some of the some of the expensive torch corals, they just don't travel the best from overseas. Not this time. If you guys are doing something different, I appreciate it. And I see you. Check out this one. Still quite expensive, but we get a lot of customers that actually drive up here from the U.S. to come shopping here. I'm not going to tell you that you can or shouldn't or whatever move them across the borders. I'm not American. You decide to throw stuff in your trunk and drive it back and not declare it to the customs officer. That's up to you, buddy. It's got nothing to do with me. Um, a lot, I'm going to tell you that a lot of people do it and uh, it's up to you. I think I'm not, I'm not endorsing anything. Actually, I'm not going to say any more on that topic. These are some cool combinations of us. Beautiful Blastamusas. Check out the color on these. So cool. Like Christmassy red and green, but a little bit of black kind of contrast. A lot of people get confused between Blastos and Akans. And I'm I'm not sure, like, I guess I can understand why, but not really. I don't really understand why. I just, maybe it's my train dime. Maybe I'm showing off, but I, I don't see how you would confuse the two. But a lot of people do. Some really nice toadstool. And these ones got some very funky, they're not called fingers. I don't think they're called, are they called tentacles? I feel like there's another word. It's escaping me. Something for toadstool to describe no, it is tentacle, right? Long tentacle. Yeah, maybe it is tentacle, but they're just, they're different. I like how they're spaced out. Not spaced out like they're on drugs and they're high. It's spaced out like physically they're far away from one another. And it just creates a very cool, almost like anemone sort of effect. Speaking about anemones, hold, 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 hold the phone. 
Look at this. What is that? I've never seen one. Those, it looks like there's almost holes in it. They're not holes on the edge on every little single tip of this. Uh, I want to say bubble tip, but it's not really bubbly. Those are, they're just painted black, but it gives the effect that it's hollow. It almost looks like tubes. But when you look really, really, really close, it's not. It's more like a black nipple on the end of each tentacle. I wonder how many people, how many grown adults out there laughed when March said nipple. Okay, let's go back over here and check out some of the zoanthids that we got because they are remarkable. Oh, damn, that's a good word, remarkable. I don't use that enough. I gotta, I'm trying to expand my vocabulary because I always use the word unique and then you guys say, at least the people in the shop give me flack for always saying, oh, it's unique. Hey, March, look at this cool. Is it unique? Yeah, man. It's so unique. So, remarkable. How about that? That's the one I've chosen for you. You know why? Because you are remarkable. This is some pipe organ. Came from another order. Personal favorite of mine. This is something that if someone doesn't buy soon, I'm going to keep. It's just a fact. It's going to happen. I usually like to give you guys a chance. It's very, very rare. That we get a shipment in and I take a piece and say, yoink, I'm not selling that. I almost always offer it to the customers first. I put the hobbyist side of me aside. The hobbyist side of me aside. The hobbyist side of me I put aside and I give you guys a chance to grab it before I decide to keep it. And usually it'll be something that just sits around for a long time like this alveopora here. Or this atomic bomb or hologram hammer, whatever you want to call it. These two are actually in there because I'm just waiting for you guys to give me permission to not sell them. And once these go into a display tank, very rare that they come out. We do not sell out of our displays like our product plug, Reef Casa Studio 12 Aquarium all in one. Check it out. <laughs> um, I sounded like Peter Griffin there. Um, once it goes in, it's not coming out, typically. Unless we really, really like you or you ask really, really nicely. Some beautiful endophilia. Check it out. It's kind of like, I like to think of this as acanthophilia, which I don't have any to show you. And cyanorina, cyanorina, as if they had a baby. Hey, our B-Rack is back up and running. If you're looking for frags starting at only five bucks Canadian. You know what that is, five bucks Canadian? It's uh, $3.60 American, uh, starting at up to maybe 10, 15 bucks. Check those out on the site. That is the B-Rack. I've taken the time to upload all of these and all of these and even more our photographer is in the middle of exams i actually need photography help if anyone out there in toronto um, is looking to maybe work part-time and come in the shop and help us to keep up and you have some coral knowledge i won't be able to train you from the ground up but if you have some some coral knowledge we do need help with photography i find that we are lacking and eli's at school he's a great guy but uh, just if we could have someone maybe pick up the slack part-time you may be able to do a little bit from home who knows Check out some more of the tenuous because we have so many of these like this one and this one and this one and this one look at the color on these i put a lot of them very inexpensive a lot less than i normally would so i kind of do that in the beginning i'll put them pretty inexpensive i want to recoup some of the money that we have in them it is a little risky to be holding so many hard corals at once and then as the stock goes down the price actually goes up. So if you buy now, I'm really not trying to, I guess I am trying to sell to you, but I'm just trying to explain how the pricing structure works. But most of our viewers are not even in Canada, so you can't even purchase from us. So we are basically just like strippers of coral. We're just here to tease you with all these beautiful pieces. Um, I'm just trying to explain why sometimes the price goes up. But I guess that makes sense, you know, scarcity. But right now we are definitely in an abundance. I have even more uh, in the basement if you want to see if you guys want to see did I get any yeses out there? Okay, you twist my arm. Let's go check it out Oh, if the lights are on the basement's haunted. I don't like going down here, but whatever it is that's down here. It's not um, It's not evil It's not Sinister it's just it's just here and just move things around and it doesn't bother anyone It's just a presence that lives in the basement of frag box. Check this out. Even more acro. We're running a ATI uh, 8 bulb 39 watt with some XHO. The new kids on the block, you won't know what I'm saying. T5? What's that, man? That's not a Radeon. No. March is old school, baby. T5. T5 with XHO? What do you know? T5 
T5, I'm still running 24 bulbs. It still hurts every six months when I gotta change them. And I'm this close to taking these off. I'm in the middle of prototyping a new light from Reef Casa. It's uh, gonna be like 24, maybe 30 inches long. Lots and lots of power. I need a break from, from the T5, but I still think that they are the best and that's why I'm still, I'm still using them. As you can see here, I put Acro underneath them and it's just like magic. The color that comes out of these, it's, there's no guessing. They're like, I find that with the, um, look at the shortcake. Look how good they look. Disregard a little bit of hair algae, but I find with the LEDs, there's just almost, there's too much tinkering, you know? The intensity, the strength, and how long, and the red, the green, the blue, the UV, the white. Do I get the Radeon XR30 or the 15? Do I get the uh, Do I get the the blue or the Pro? Or maybe I should get a Hydra or a, a, a Sky LED? Or maybe I don't know. Do I need to accent it on the side with some Kessels? Forget all that. There was none of that. You got ATI Blue Plus bulbs. Maybe, maybe a Purple Plus like that. You turn this sucker on for eight hours a day, there's no question, your, your shit's gonna look amazing. Everything, your Zoas, your LPS, your Akens, if you put them in the right spot, everything just looks great. It has so many downsides when it comes to temperature, it's bulky, um, you gotta change the bulbs, which is a pain in the butt, they're expensive, electricity to run it, everything about it sucks except sheer growing power and coloration on hard corals and I think that if you've been in this long enough you you'd be you'd, you'd agree with me or at least we'd have a very close debate LEDs are just just about there but there's still some benefits and even when I take these fixtures off if anyone's looking for some used ones for sale I'm still gonna run a hybrid system with some T5 across the sides because I think that um, it's still worth it. I still think there's room. It's not dead yet the way halide is dead. Good luck finding halide bulbs. But anyways, this is um, what we have here in the basement. Um, we'll do a whole other video kind of going over the zoas there. All the lovely little fishies that we have in the store. Maybe some of the reasons why I've decided that I don't want to sell fish anymore. I really... I'm going to go back upstairs so we can get away from the ghost who didn't make an appearance. I don't want to sell fish. I never wanted to sell fish. I got into this for the coral. People ask me what I do. I say I sell fish. I operate a fish store. It's, it couldn't be further from the truth. I have maybe five fish on hand right now. A red fire fish, a yellow clown goby, a Hector goby, a chromis, maybe a royal grammar or orchid dotty back. And why that is is because they are difficult to get in healthy, quarantine, treat, medicate, and sell, and then turn a profit. It is not easy. I have tried. And our single best performing video of all time was shot in a store in Buffalo. Thank you, Randy, for taking the time. It's called ARC, A Reef Creation. This guy is the godfather of this. I look up to people like him so much. You know, I used to drive down to Buffalo and make that trip to pick up rare zoanthids and then bring them back over across the border because it was worth it. We had nothing like that here. And I really, really looked up to him. It's a great shop. I think everyone should check it out. He's one of the nicest guys out there. Um, for, I think I was the first guy to bring actually utter chaos into this country. I paid a hundred and where are they? Hmm, $150 US. Oh, the one that was dying over here for a single head. 150 or 200. And I uh, drove them back. I used to sell these for like a hundred, 150 a head all day. And I bought it from Randy. I think I was the first guy in Canada. I could be wrong. There's no way to prove it. But the, the point is it's a very nostalgic store. I hold them in such a high regard. And that video did really well. It's got like 125,000 viewers already. It's the most profitable video of all time. And Randy said something in that video that always stuck with me. Fish are hard. He, you can go back and watch it. You can watch him on camera say it. You don't make money on the fish. You use them to bring in people in the store and then you're here. There's no way you're coming in for one thing. It's very rare that someone walks in this shop. It's been designed like an Apple store to take your money. No, um, <laughs> a little bit, but it's very rare that people come in here and don't end up at the register. And it's also very rare that you, you spend more that you, you leave with less than one thing. It just doesn't happen very, very often. So the fish for him, the way he explained it is like a lost leader. I found the same and I'm reading this freaking book. I almost wish I didn't pick up because it's making me so much more compassionate towards fish 
It's called What a Fish Knows, and thank you, Pamela, for sending me that book. I'm really, really enjoying it, but also, if you don't see any more fish for sale in this store, you are, okay, what's another way to say blame? Not to blame, you are the cause for saving some of our fishy friends. It's a, it's a really, really great book. I think everyone should read it. If you keep fish, you're gonna be so much more in tune with them. These things definitely communicate. They have feelings and emotions. They get happy, sad, angry, they fight, they, they can love, they feel fear, and they feel pain. And when we import fish, when I used to try, typically 30 to 40% dead right out of the box, that's a good order. I don't know any other industry or pet industry that works like that other than fish. And for some reason, they're just the species that gets the short end of the stick. You know, so many people, myself included, like I'm vegetarian except I eat fish. What is that? How come, how come fish? How come they are less important than than a dog. I wouldn't eat a dog. I keep a dog so I find it's a little hypocritical to eat them and to keep them and sell them and uh, it's not what I want to get into and I've been lucky enough to have a successful business for my entire adult life, almost 12-13 years now, growing, profitable, year after year. I'm at the point now where I choose to work. I don't have to do this. I've made enough, I've invested, uh, and, and enough revenue streams come in that everything that happens on a day-to-day -day basis is for a choice. So why do I choose to sell these things, inadvertently kill them, just to turn a profit? It's not why I wanted to get into it, and the more I read this stupid book, the more I read it, the more I don't want to, and I feel myself sort of pulling back. I, it's not a big part of our revenue anyways. Okay, you know what? I'll do a whole nother episode. Maybe we'll wrap this one up. And I uh, just wanted to give you a little insight where my mind's at and how I'm thinking. The dog just farted. You are a disgusting creature, but I love you so very much. And we'll leave it at that. We'll leave it with a great, big old, stinky bulldog fart. Have a good night, or morning, or afternoon, wherever you're watching from. Bye for now.